Hi everyone, welcome back. This is part two of my printmaking demonstration. My name is Sylvie. I'm here at Balderson Studios in St Andrews, uh, the studio that I work from on a regular basis. And uh, my uh, live stream videos for you are on printmaking uh, photogravure plates. Photogravure is another word for photo etchings. So you might remember last week I printed this image uh, for you and I printed it using one colour ink which was a dark sepia colour. Uh, it came out pretty good but uh, this week we're going to explore adding colour to the plate and um, seeing how that works out. So I'll bring you up closer to the table and show you how I've prepared my inks and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I have prepared here the, um, you can see the uh, dark ink that we used last week, that's still out. Um, and then I've got some etching inks of different colours that I'm going to mix up. I've made up a little palette here, which has got some inks that I've already um, mixed. Uh, I've chosen to use sort of a greeny coloured ink and a sort of a ready autumny. I'm going for autumny sort of colours uh, for this print and I want them to be quite light and transparent. Um, so my green here has quite a lot of yellow uh, as well as white um, mixed into it. So uh, again I'm using the Charbonnel range of etching inks for the colours and uh, that's pretty much what I've got set up. Okay, so, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ink up the plate with the dark brown colour in the back and this is exactly the same process that I did for the first plate. So I want the plate to have like an even overall tone as a background. So let's you will remember this from last week how I applied the ink nice and evenly and then I used my tarlatan to work the way work the ink into the plate. This might bring back the memories from last week. Uh, hopefully you watched that video. If not, this is a rerun of what I did last week. So the image is coming through on the plate quite nicely now. I can see the detail of the of the image. So I know I'm getting close to giving the plate a wipe with the yellow pages paper and so I'm just buffing now the, the, the surface of the plate quite lightly. I don't want to take the ink out from the deeper parts of the etched plate where the shadows and the blacks are but I just want to buff the highlights. Now I'm not going to uh, give it a complete um, buff like I would if I was just printing this in the one colour because I'm now going to start applying some of the other colours that I want. So I'm using a technique called a la poupée colour and it's basically um, hand applying the colour to the plate and then working it in so that it, the colours blend. Uh, there's no sort of recipe for this, uh, it's just trial and error and I did make a one print earlier which I'm quite happy with. Uh, so I am sort of have had a bit of a practice run, I'm cheating a little bit. So I'm just going to apply colour to areas that I want. Thank you. 
I'm using just a, a wiping cloth uh, to apply the colour uh, that I've just wrapped around my finger to get into the little areas that I want. But you could also use a cotton buds. I've got little cotton buds here. Um, or any other implement that you think might work, like a small roller. And it does depend on where you're putting that colour. So because I'm applying it to very sort of little uh, small uh, intricate uh, details of the image, um, I feel like my finger has good control over the, uh, the areas that I want to take effect. I guess this is a, a technique that you'll never get two prints the same. So it's very difficult to addition when you're using Alapupe colour because an addition means that your prints should all look very, very similar. With a, I think the uh, the industry standard is sort of a a maximum of ten percent difference for it to fit into an addition, and clearly we're using this technique, we're going to get more than a ten percent variation between prints. But that's also the beauty of it is that you'll never have two prints the same. Okay, so I've applied the green onto the main leaf at the top, and I'm just going to blend that in. Now with paper. So remember, I've got that base colour underneath, that uh, sepia, dark sepia underneath, which I think will help the colours blend on the top. And obviously, you don't have to have that colour underneath, but I remembered when we were hand colouring photographic prints back in the old days. <laughs> we used to tone our prints first in sepia and uh, I was taught that having that sepia underneath uh, helped the hand coloured uh, colours over the top blend in a lot, uh, a lot nicer and so and that did actually work quite nice. So I am using that theory on an etching plate. Whether it will work or not is another thing. So that was the green. And I'm going to add some of those nice autumny brown colours. A little bit of yellow. This is a mixture of yellow and sanguine. I've mixed sanguine and black for the background. And now I'm going to just apply some of this sanguine colour to the to some other leaves. I'm going to go back to the green as well and just put some of that green in as well in a little while. I have no sort of pre uh, formula for how I'm doing this. I'm just playing it by ear and um, Seeing what's happened, what's going to happen. I think that's why I like this process because it's it's very um, organic. Is a good word for it. So I've added some of that sanguine brown colour into certain parts of the print. And now I'm going to just blend that in again with the paper like I did earlier with the green.
I'll go back again to the green and maybe I'll choose a green with a little bit more yellow in it this time just to add a little bit of more tonality. It's a little bit too charged up. Just to break up that brown with a little bit more yellow. The, uh, this image really has lovely translucent leaves that um, I took this photograph in Kew Gardens in London in one of the greenhouses and the light that was coming through uh, through the leaves was really spectacular and that's the feel that I want to maintain in this print just that translucency coming through the leaves and I love the combination of the leaves and the wrought ironwork of the greenhouse. Uh, that's one of the things that really attracted me to uh, photographing this series. So I made the original image very, uh, very light-handed with, as far as contrast goes. I didn't add a lot of contrast to it just to bring in that, that sort of light mood. The plate itself looks quite gorgeous. So I'm just going to get rid of the messy paper in the background. And I think I will just, with a cotton bud, add a little bit more of this darker brown colour. With the cotton bud you can really get into little areas and fine tune where you're applying the colour. I'm getting close to what I want. I hope it's as uh, meditative for you to be watching this <laughs> video as it is for me to make it. <laughs> or to apply the colour, I should say. Can be slow but worth the effort. Okay, so I'll just give it a final wipe to blend in those last colours that I added in. All right, I think that's pretty much done. I'm hoping you can see the inked up plate. I think that looks terrific. I think I like the plate more than the print. I'll take a close-up photo of that for you. Here's a close-up of the plate. So you might remember last week I showed you how to dampen the paper. Uh, I've got a piece of Fabriano Rosapina uh, paper here which is suitable for what I'm doing and I dampened the paper with a brush and water and I've just running the water across the paper on both sides and leaving it 
in between some blotting paper until I'm ready to use it. Oops. Okay, nice even coating of paper, of water rather, <laughs> and under some blotting paper. And that will be ready to go for us when we make the print. So I've got the press organised with the uh, etching blankets, my piece of tissue that's going to separate the uh, plate from the blankets. Bring my plate over. I've got a registration sheet here on the press, uh, which is the same one that I was using last time. So put my plate on the press and then I need my paper which I have left over here. <laughs> Picking up the paper with my nippers so that I don't uh, get my inky fingerprints on the paper. The paper goes down on the press according to the registration marks, making sure that the paper is the right way around on the plate and uh, the tissue over the top. And as I mentioned before, the tissue stops the dampness of the paper from transferring onto the blankets, as well as keeping the blankets clean as clean as possible. As you can see, these blankets get used um, by quite a few people in this workshop. So they're full of fingerprints. The press has been set with maximum pressure for this plate. Um, photopolymer etching plates for photo etching need quite a fair bit of pressure. So I'll bring you over to this side to reveal the print and uh, we'll see what happens. The moment of reveal, it's always very exciting, a little bit nerve wracking and full of surprises. I think that's not too bad. Could do with a bit of tweaking as usual. I'll bring you up closer to have a look at the print. Just take the plate out of the way. Here we are, closer look. Colour. Very subtle colour, but I think quite effective for this image. Just subtle autumny greens and orangey browns. I think that works quite well. So that technique was called a la poupée colour on a photo etching, photo reveal plate. Okay, that wraps it up for uh, this session of my printmaking demonstrations. Um, this was part two of a three-part series. Uh, next time I join you, I'll demonstrate a technique called Shinkale, uh, which is a uh, printmaking technique where we add a second uh, piece of paper to the, to the uh, plate um, to introduce uh, another colour variation. Um, I'm sure you'll find that interesting, so I hope you'll join me then. And uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.